Today I want to talk about the request animation frame. This is a method belonging to the window object that lets you do a more accurate version of set interval. So if you if ever use set interval, you know you can give it a number of milliseconds and every that number of milliseconds, it's going to do something. You can call a function every so often. So it's a regular interval. But the regular interval is not always going to be exactly what you want and it can cause some issues. Imagine if you were creating a movie and you had a stuntman who was going to be throwing punches, you were filming from behind the stuntman and you wanted to time it perfectly so that the other person could dodge. Well, you could have the person punching every so often and you give them an exact interval and say okay I want you to punch every one second and so the person does this is throwing the punch every one second but the person who's dodging the punch if they ever get tired or they get distracted they're not going to be using the same timing and they could end up getting hit instead of dodging the punch with request animation frame what we're doing is we're saying Every time the screen is going to be repainted, every time the browser is ready to do a paint, here's a function I want you to run. So it's not an exact amount of time in between, it's when the browser's ready, we're going to try to do this on a very regular interval. So it's going to be a much smoother animation or a much smoother transition from one state to another. So let's take a look at this. I've got this web page here with two paragraphs, one called output, one called box. I'm going to do just some basic text updating here and the box I'm going to do an animation with. So we've got variables that uh, point to the two things and I've got a couple variables I'm going to use the number, I'm going to increment the count and display it here and then for the box I'm going to update the position on the screen so we can see how both these things work. So we're going to have a function, let's call it paint and I want to call this function so I can call the function once like this, or if we're using the method window request animation frame, we can pass in the name of the function to call. So it's going to call paint. Now this is only going to run one time, so this function will be called once. If we want it to run again, then inside this function we're going to have to recursively call it. We're going to have to call it again. So inside of here we could say request animation frame and I can write it without the word window simply because it's belonging to the window object and anything that belongs to the window object writing the word window at the very beginning is considered optional in the browser. Okay, if I ran the code like this this function is going to run every time that the browser is going to do a paint. It's about to paint the screen. That's going to be a huge waste of time. We need to have some way of stopping it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to increment this number and then I'm going to display it inside of here. So we'll say output dot, let's use text content equals that number. Now to be able to stop this thing I'm going to have to look at the value for that number and decide when do I want to stop. So if number is less than, let's say 300, then I'm going to call this. So every time the function paint runs, it's going to do this check. And as long as number is less than 300, it's going to call this again. All right, so we can jump back here and we can see there it is. It's just running through the numbers and once it gets up to 300, it stops. Okay, another interesting thing about this is this request animation frame for better performance. Browsers will actually pause this if it's running and the tab goes into the background or if it's inside of an iframe that's hidden you're not going to see this. So if I refresh this I come back here wait for a few seconds which normally would have been enough to get up to that 300. If I come back here you can see I wasn't even over 100 yet. So it will pause this calling of the request animation frame if the tab goes into the background. So fantastic performance thing. That's not going to happen with the set interval. It will continue to run in the background. Alright, let's do something with an actual animation. 
as the name implies, it's a great way to animate things. So we'll create another function here. I'm going to call it move. And inside of here, we're going to take the X position and similar to what we did above, but instead of just adding one to it, I'm going to add five pixels to this thing every time the function gets called. So I'm going to change this from paint to calling the move function. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to take my box and set its CSS transform property is going to be equal to translate X. So I'm going to move it by that amount. And we'll put the PX in there. There we go. So this will run one time now. But again, we have to keep calculating it. When do you want to stop doing it? Or how long do you want to keep doing it? Request animation frame. We're going to call our move function again. And inside of here, well, let's do a calculation. I'm going to say the, my window width. So we'll take document.body.clientWidth. So there's the width of my screen. And let's minus 100 pixels off there. So as long as WW or the um, X position is less than the width of my screen, less 100 pixels, keep calling this. There we go. And so it's a very nice, smooth animation. Now, if you want to know how long each of these frames are taking, or if there's any issues, you can actually track that. There is a value. Every time you call request animation frame, you call the function, there's actually a value that gets passed into this function. And this is going to be a high resolution timestamp. So this is a value measured in milliseconds to tell us how long it took. So if we're starting, let's use our count number out up here, this number, it's starting at zero. So we'll use that as my starting point. And I'm going to say, so if Timmy gets passed in, it's not being, if I call it directly move, it wouldn't be called. But since I'm using request animation frame here and here to call it, this variable will exist. This is just to protect me if someplace else in my code I ever called move without passing in the parameter. We're going to check and let's do a calculation. Let's find what is Timmy minus number. So that's how long it took to get to the first call here. And we're going to write this out console.log. And we'll write out how long it took for this initial frame since the launch of the page. And then every subsequent one, it's how long between the calls. So we're going to update number to be this high resolution timestamp. or high res uh, DOM timestamp, I think it is. There we go. So while that's animating, we can look through here. Most of these are taking about 16 milliseconds. There's a slight variation. And here's one right here. So the first one took a lot longer, but there's one right here, 33 milliseconds. So you will get times occasionally, like if I pause it and then I go back, we can find where that happened. There it is right there. So there was two seconds or 2.7 seconds where we were away from the page where that was the difference between the frames. Oh, this one ran quite well, 16 milliseconds for everything else. So just something that you can easily do to check and see how well your page is performing with your animations if you're using this method to update the interface in any way. All right, so I hope that helps you out. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. I'll answer as many as I have time for. And as always, thanks for watching.